So Taylor Hansen from Tenet Media went out and asked people if we should have open borders in America because apparently that's just a, a debate we're actually having nowadays. But you guys, there's a handful of scenes in this video that we absolutely have to unpack. Before we do, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Thank you all for being here. If you could please really quickly smash that like button for the algorithm, I would greatly appreciate it as it does really help the channel reach more people out there. So this video is called Open Borders in America. Full video, as always, will be down in the description below. Taylor does a great job at reaching both sides and getting both points of view here. He goes out in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. So he gets a pretty nice balanced viewpoint for Fort Worth, Texas. Let's go ahead and jump on in. Do you think America should have open borders? No, absolutely not. Why not? Well, we have to have a country. We have to have borders of some kind. It's almost like, you know, that's the, the key cornerstone of being a country, right? Is having a set border. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> sure. I mean, it, and exactly. Well said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I couldn't have said any better. I mean, that, that doesn't mean we, uh, we don't have a way in. We need a way in. Yeah. I'm an immigrant and I did it the right way. And I'm proud of that. I'm, a, I'm an American now, but I wasn't born in this country. Where were you born? Canada. A incredibly reasonable response from that gentleman right there. No, I think that everybody should be able to come to America, but as long as they're accounted for. And doing it the right way, right? Exactly, yep, yep. I'm all for, you know, immigrants, people coming in, you know, as long as everybody knows they're here, Yeah. essentially. Yes, I do. I think that everyone should have an opportunity to have experiences that we do. Do you think there should be a vetting process or should we just allow you know everybody in? I think there needs to be some sort of process, but I don't think that we should have closed off borders. Uh, that response is incredibly common for people that just want open borders. I mean, she said it right there, don't close them off, but we should have some process. Well, how are you gonna have them if they're all just walking across the Southern border? That, that doesn't make any sense, right? If you hear that and you think, yeah, it actually doesn't make sense, it's not really supposed to. Many people that respond that way simply just want open borders, and that's it. Should have closed off borders. Um, yeah. Why? Well, I'm, because I'm, why is it fair that, oh, fuck, I can't do this. <laughs> because, like, why is it fair we can go wherever we want, but nobody can come over the fuck over here, you know? So it's just unfair, and it's not okay. A lot of people don't have good homes where they are or good situations, so I feel like America's like a place to start over. We can't go wherever we want. We can't, you can't just like illegally enter a country and be like, oh, don't worry, I'm from America. No, you go over there with your visa. There's a legal way that you're doing it. And perhaps this person's just, this you know, young lady's just ignorant to what exactly is going on. But that comparison obviously makes uh, minimal sense there. All right, next person. I don't believe it should be open now. I just think the need to vet who comes in and there should be a process, um, a robust process in place to make sure that to allow people who are going to contribute rather than just have them open for indis indiscriminately for everyone. Basically people that can assimilate to the American culture. Right, exactly. I'm an immigrant myself, so. Where are you from? South Africa. Awesome. I'm glad you guys liked it. <laughs> yeah. It depends on as long as it's going to be safe because in my, in my, just my opinion, I mean, you look at the construction, all the hard work, it's the only ones doing it. So if you close it, who's going to do it? That's just my opinion. <laughs> They're the only ones doing it? I've heard this response countless times on the street. People say that to me pretty frequently. I just went out and did a video with John Doyle talking about the Biden border crisis. And that was a common response is it's the only construction workers. Now, if you're working in construction, perhaps you can enlighten me, you know, drop something in the comments and let us know your personal experience with that. But just from my experience, you know, working in California over the last handful of years, not even YouTube, I'm talking about outside of YouTube before I even got involved in that, you know, we were hiring legal immigrants when they were doing contracting work and all that. Perhaps there's a decent amount of illegal immigrants in California doing construction and probably in Texas, I would imagine as well. But I don't know. I think saying they're the only people doing construction is a bit of a stretch. And I did want to touch on this conversation with this lady right here. Taylor did a great job at bringing up the assimilation topic around all of this because that is an incredibly important part about legal immigration is you want people to come into the country that are willing to assimilate, that want to be Americans. That's how you're gonna build a strong country. 
I think partially, actually pretty much the entire reason for wanting open borders is because you actually don't like the country. You do not care about assimilation. All right, everyone, let's take a few moments to talk about today's sponsor, DealDash. Now, I know many of you are already bidding on DealDash, but for those of you who don't know, DealDash is an auction website that many people either seem to love or hate. If you've seen their ads on TV at any point or in the last 15 years, you'll know that they have thousands of auctions every day with brand new items. Here's just a handful of items that are up for auction today, a 2024 Polaris Sportsman. They have a literal car, an Acura RDX. They have iPads and iPhones auctioning off for $15 on this website. Here's an Xbox Series X that sold for $53.08. That is ridiculous. So you're probably wondering, okay, what's the catch because this just seems ridiculous. Well, you have to pay for the right to bid. I'll explain. Right here, you can buy 250 bids for $30, which means you can bid 250 times in any of their auctions. Now, every auction starts at $0 with no minimum reserve price. And every time you bid, you can at most raise the price by a penny. After you bid, the auction timer counts down by 10 seconds. And if nobody bids in the next 10 seconds, you win the auction. So Deal Dash hooked me up with some bids. Let's go ahead and find some items to bid on. Uh, well, I guess we got to go for the 2024 Polaris Sportsman first. So you'll see right here, I'm going to go ahead and click bid. I'm the zombie right there. We're the number one bid. I mean, might as well jump in the car bid as well. Go ahead and click bid. And real James Klug, you're winning. Number one. So you guys, check out dealdash.com. When you sign up, use my promo code KLUG100 and you'll get 100 free bids on your first bid pack purchase. And if you don't win an auction using these bids, you just don't like it for any reason, contact DealDash and they'll give you your money back, no questions asked, on your first bid pack purchase. So the downside is basically non-existent. You guys do me a favor, check out dealdash.com slash klug100 and take advantage of this deal. I'll put a link down in the description below. Let's get back on this video. Do you think there are negative consequences to mass migration, at least to the amount and the extent that we're seeing right now under this administration in America? Oh, lots of negative consequences. Oh, tick yeah, oh, clearly and especially the border states, but not just the border states, because of course people are being distributed around the country to places w that aren't really set up to receive them. Yeah. So no, I think we this this country needs to get it under control. And it's not just at the border, it's also working with the countries that you know are sending a lot of the folks up here who probably don't know better. Yeah. The UN facilitating things, giving them money cards, yeah. buying them there's, tickets. There's, I'm sure a lot of these people just don't know any better. They, they're given disinformation, they're lied to, they're deceived. People take money from them, promising of them a future that's just not going to happen when they get here. So, I mean, my heart goes out to them, but there is a right way to do it. Yeah, I mean, you have cartels that are preying off all these people, collecting thousands of dollars from each person that they're dropping off at the southern border. Not only that, though, you have Eric Adams, the mayor of New York, saying that illegal immigration in their city under this administration, under Joe Biden's administration, is destroying the city. They only have 110,000 roughly illegal immigrants in their city right now from Biden's border crisis. Imagine what the other 9 million plus are doing to the southern states. Yeah, I think there's negative consequences. They're bringing across criminals, they're bringing in drugs, they're, they're not producing a useful input to this economy to society you know not really assimilating i don't think they're assimilating I was just yeah it, that's a big concern you know there are a lot of good people that just want to come here for a better life that's there's no doubt about that but it is not the united states job to inherit the entire third world and take care of them and mixed in with that is what this guy's talking about he's not wrong about that not wrong about that at all yes but i still don't think that the negatives outweigh what we could give other people the opportunity to experience. What do you think those negatives might be? I definitely see that there could be, you know, like job opportunities and things like that, that that would be impacted. But I think that like experiencing more culture and more people is a positive in the long run. Well, okay, hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. We're talking about the jobs. We're acknowledging that the jobs are being taken. And by the way, that disproportionately affects minorities and inner city communities, by the way, the low wage earners that's who it disproportionately affects so uh this lady's racist no i'm just kidding but when it comes to ignoring all the other issues right the illegal immigrants make up about like close to 25 percent of federal drug crimes you have in many places in the country around like 20 percent of jail inmates are illegal immigrants but not just that not just that you have excluding the what 2.5 million per year that are being apprehended at the southern border and it's a basically just it's not even just a catch and release anymore it's just a greet and release they just say hi and go into the country essentially but if we're just excluding that for a quick moment 
Let's talk about the gotaways. 600,000 gotaways per year. These are people that are deliberately avoiding Border Patrol because if they get caught, they will be deported. These are criminals. These are gang members. These are drug runners, cartel members. So 600,000 known gotaways, not even talking about unknown gotaways. What is the positive effect for those people coming to the country? Just curious. Name one. That's 600,000 people per year. I would love to hear that answer. Culture and more people, it's a positive in the long run. I mean, it goes both ways. It can have a negative effect with, with the bad people, but you got some people come here looking for a better living. Like I know some people that came from across the seas, like in Europe or whatever, and they come here and make a better living for themselves because over there they don't have the same opportunities that they have here. But now you go come over here and do the crime and all that, then I say close the border, lock all the asses up. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? Keep America safe, yeah, right? Keep America safe first, but I mean, but you gotta look at it, they come over and do construction. If you look at 360 now, and you go out there, you in your traffic jam, just look out the window. You're gonna see nothing but minorities, nothing but Hispanics. So if you close the border, who's gonna do that work? I know I'm not getting out there and then he didn't do it. <laughs> That's just facts. Okay, J just because you're seeing minorities does not mean that they're all illegal. I understand this guy's point. Like, I look, I'm not gonna play dumb. I get his point, but that does not mean that they're all illegal. This guy is certainly willing to have his mind changed or at least listen to information because he's saying, Look, if people are coming over here and committing crimes, yeah, get that under control. It kind of sounds like he's putting that out there because possibly he would be open to hearing some information around that and changing his mind on that. Because yes, there's a lot of good people coming over the southern border. Great. Come legally. Come legally. I don't see as much of an issue of it. I don't really see a downside. Any excuses that I've heard, you know, people say against it, like, oh, they'll take all our jobs or what, that's a load of nonsense to me. Do you think crime could potentially be an issue or the assimilation of people that, you know, don't carry, you know, American values or, cult or culture, or do you think that's not as important? I don't think there would be much of a difference in crime anyway, regardless of open borders or not, because that's not one of the, to me, one of the root issues. I don't know if she thinks that that made sense, but that definitely did not make sense. <laughs> it's it's really hard to tell with people like this if they're just completely ignorant or they just simply do not care. It's either this wild lack of self-preservation, which by the way is prominent among folks on the left. Like they really don't care about giving all their guns away to the federal government. They really don't care about preserving American culture. That's why they really don't care about 3 million plus people a year coming across the southern border illegally. They just, they really don't don't like America as it stands, and therefore they don't want to protect it. A part of you just kind of wonders if they know about the issues. You're saying it's not adding anything on top of the crime, the illegal immigration. 112,000 fentanyl overdoses last year. Cartels are running that all over the southern border, and, and you just, no? No, that, oh, just, horse, I guess just horse blinders at that point. I, I, I don't know. So final question to wrap up the video. Taylor asked people about Donald Trump's promise to deport everyone that's been brought in illegally under the Biden administration. This is how people respond. Boy, that's like the 50 mark essay question. So the atmospherics on that are horrible, but like usual, the, there's a kernel of, he's got a point in there, but the trouble is the way he would execute it, it would probably ruin our country's re reputation for generations. Do I agree with the concept that one one of these days, someone's gonna have to have the kahunas to deport people who shouldn't be here? Yeah, I do. But I have a feeling I know how he would do it, and it would be very ugly for this country's reputation. So in concept, yeah, okay, but uh, the execution of this one, I really worry what it does to our country if he, if he were to do it. So I guess you're talking about people who have basically come in within the past few years. Yes. Well, I mean, it might be probably a good thing to, to allow okay. them to return home. Mass deportation, kind of the way it talked about it actually sounds kind of violent. It needs to be done properly. That concern is incredibly valid. It needs to be done properly because yes, I mean, they aren't wrong, right? If you deported 20 million people that were here illegally in the United States, even if it was almost flawless, the media would be watching you like a hawk. And when the media is doing that, they're able to expose, I mean, you're talking about 20 million people. There's going to be some bad stories in there somewhere. There are. Because with all those people coming over the southern border, if the media was actually paying attention closely to what's going on down at the southern border, they would have just an equal amount of insane stories, if not much worse, obviously, because the cartels are involved. But yeah, they'd be watching it like a hawk. You would have to be very careful about that. The concern is valid, but 
she gave a great response right there. I would generally support that. I would think there needs to be some moderation in his actions, but yeah, I think that's the right move. I think depending on the situation that the people came in illegally, I think there's certain circumstances where we have to show a little more compassion for people in those situations. You gotta do something. Um, and so, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm voting for President Trump, assuming he's the candidate, but uh, something has to be done. We can't just keep the status quo. The way it's like Brian said, it's just, we're gonna be overrun. That's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. Back to this guy right here, just saying, we, we, there needs to be some compassion. These people are looking for a better life. We, we have to take them in. How convenient is the left-wing argument that they can cause a complete crisis, cause a complete disaster by allowing in over 10 million illegal immigrants into the country, completely unvetted, by the way. And then uh, when it comes to cleaning up the mess, that's what gets criticized. How convenient is that argument? It's essentially foolproof for the left. And really, if you're still wondering why Joe Biden is doing this at the southern border, it's because that's how 50% of the country, maybe 40% of the country, sees it. Oh, well, well, you already created this massive disaster and already brought in 10 million plus people, even though our schools are overflowing, hospitals are overflowing. But it's not very nice of you to get rid of them. I would make the argument that it's not very nice to assist cartels in making them uh, richer beyond their wildest dreams, getting drugs, smuggling human beings across the border. I would argue that's the unkind thing to do. Creating a crisis where people are dying, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people are dying as a result of just handing the southern border over to the cartels. I see that as being unkind. But this is where the debate is. This is why it's just such a convenient argument for the left. You try to clean up the mess and they complain about it. That's not fair, that's not fair. Cause they came over here for a fresh new start, came, built their family and all this. A lot of my friends are like their family from Mexico and they did everything they can to come over here. And it's not fair that you just literally have to throw them out just because you don't like them. <laughs> just, just because you don't like them. Oh right, it's a racism thing. That's what it is. Because you discriminate against them based on their skin color. That's why it's, it's not even the conversation that's being, that's being had right now. Not even the conversation at all. America first. Prioritize American citizens. We have tons of disasters going on in this country right now. Prioritize fixing it up. Have you gone around inner city communities and seen those communities? Let's work on an uplifting Americans, not importing tens of millions of illegals. Man, I'll vote for Trump, Trump all day. Yeah, I'll vote for Trump. When Biden got, I voted for Biden, he ain't do shit. I'm paying for a vote. Yeah, I regret it. I'm voting for Trump. I told my fiance we need to vote for Trump. And look, we, we didn't vote for Trump. Look now, look what happened. When Trump was in president, everybody got free money. You got free money, I got free money, she got free money, everybody. You get a bag, I get a bag, everybody get a bag. Well, and the money that you were making was actually what it was worth exactly. instead of half the prices. Yeah, and when Biden got an offer, I'm a truck driver. Biden got an offer, shut our whole shit down. How's that gas treating you? Yeah, yeah. I'm voting Trump, baby. That's, yeah, Trump. <laughs> that, guy, that guy rocks. That's awesome. Good, good finish with that guy right there. It's pretty funny. I've heard that argument multiple times of like, Trump giving the uh, stimulus checks and a lot of people seeing that. But it, it sounds like this guy also, aside from that, obviously, it sounds like he also sees a difference between Biden and Trump in his own life, his own pocketbook. That's pretty cool to see. But I think Taylor did a fantastic job. This guy's kind of in the middle a little bit, maybe, maybe center right, center left, whatever it may be. I think he did a fantastic job at showing both sides of the argument. Taylor, great job on this, man. If you're watching this video, great job on this one. If you guys want to check out the full video, I did cover the whole video. If you guys want to check out the full video, hit that link down in the description below. Go support Tenet. Go support Taylor. And if you guys enjoyed my commentary, please make sure to smash that like button. Make sure to leave a comment down in the comment section below. Did I miss anything? Did I leave anything out? Who was your favorite person that Taylor interviewed? Let me know down in the comments. If you're not subscribed already, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification button so you're notified next time I post. I'll catch you all in the next video.